101.5 FM, well, 12 months is a long time in, uh, they say a week's a long time in politics, 12 months is a long time in country music, but I'll tell you what, this next guest, it gives me, it's probably more passionate and more special for me, because leading in the end of last year, we did a bit of a a wrap-up about um, what we... um, what we uh, thought was some of our highlights and what we're looking forward to next year. And, of course, Tracy, you said Catherine Britt was a a shoe-in for Female Artist Mm -hmm. of the Year at Urban, and one of your highlights was was Catherine Britt's album. You said it was... Uh, uh, For for where, would you say? For Female Artist at Urban? No, at Tamworth, sorry. (laughs) And for me, as you recall, saying that uh, one of the the great songs that I'd seen all year, seen it live, heard it on thing, was uh, was The Drover's Wife, just the feeling behind it, and it couldn't happen to a nicer bloke. And, of course, last year's 2012 Urban Ambassador of course, is Luke O'Shea, and he joins us on the phone. Congratulations for uh, what snap, what uh, topped off a fantastic 2012 for you, Luke O'Shea. Oh, thank you, Mr Big D, and thank you, Tracy. Thanks for having me back on your show, too. Uh, anytime. You're, you know you're always welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. No, look, I really do have, uh, feel like I've got a, a real connection with uh, South East Queensland there, and it's largely thanks to... You know, people like you have been supporting me all those years, even before the awards and all that stuff. So that was the beauty of uh, picking up a few gongs this year, and that's um, you know justifying people like you's belief in me for you know for so long. Hey, look, there was a sense when when we did the urban launch last year, and yeah. you um, and you sat down and and sang a couple of songs for us and and did their. Well, I could see the body language of people around the place just looking this album is something special did you have that same feeling that that this was this was something that was just a little out of the box a little different oh mate yeah absolutely like yeah yeah well, i think that the thing is you know you get to a certain age and you just know who you are uh, you know, you've made all your mistakes that you want to make even though you continue to do so but you just develop the way that you tell a story and you've got a, a wealth of experience to draw from and um I think uh, with the, the last couple of albums, Prodigal Son especially, I think I was finding my feet with uh, Listen to the Words, and then Prodigal Son really kind of hit the, the stride for me. And then uh, to just to see it home with the, the, the driver's wife, and to have all these people who have heard the album, it might be years later after I put it out there, go, hang on, I'm really connecting with the stories and the, the imagery that's uh, presented in these songs. And the musicians I've always surrounded myself with have always been top shelf, so... Uh, it's just been about time and people are very busy, I understand that, as I am, and you don't get the chance to kind of listen to songs, you know, and have that luxury. So, you know, if not for, you know, the radio DJs just going, look, you've got to listen to this and just, uh, you know, take the time just to absorb the story of, say, the drivers or, you know, uh, New England Sky or even the newest single, Same Small Town, you know, it, it, it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm very, very grateful to people like yourselves and especially to the Mildura Country Music Festival where they created such a, a noise down there for me and uh, picking up, you know, four of their gongs down there, it really did force the rest of the industry to listen and, uh, you know, Tamworth was, uh, the success of Tamworth kind of largely followed on the heels of that. This uh, this radio station has got a uh, a big commitment every Thursday night to country music. Um, our program till eight o'clock, and then uh, the Nick Irby program uh, through until ten. And a commitment that uh, a big credit to the radio station here is done every Thursday night at ten o'clock, just straight after Nick Irby. Uh, we play an Australian album track to track, back to back. Um, and tonight, of course, it's going to be Amber Lawrence's "Try," which is uh, three. Uh, uh, three, sorry, "Try." Three. Uh, the song was "Try." Uh, and and it, with the feedback we're getting from uh, from the listeners, uh, it gives me a great opportunity to just sit down. And it's different listening to it on the radio than putting it in the CD or listening in the car because we're just kicking back and listening to it. And uh, we look forward to in the next couple of weeks of uh, of playing the Drover's Wife too for people to to hear that if they haven't had the opportunity to just pause everything put everything on hold for the next hour and just sit back and listen to the album yeah look mate if people don't hear it then they can't connect and uh you know radio is still the best way of getting uh, the word out there and uh you know it's the time that we spend in a car is just quality time so you know be you at home is a thousand things that you do at home but uh yeah i don't know most of your listeners are probably like me whereby the car is your sanctuary where you get to turn on and bliss out for a while 
And I think uh, what you're probably finding now, I think which is what you said true, is now I get to, to tell my story and people are actually listening to the story. You'll probably find now that now that you've sort of got, got to that level now where people go, well, you know what, what, what did he do beforehand? And they'll go back and they'll start listening to your earlier stuff and they'll actually really start listening and, and hearing the stories, whereas before they might have thought, oh, yeah, you know, if he doesn't catch them straight away. But I tell you what, the, the hook's on the end of that line, the sinker's out there, and you're now starting to drag them in. So congratulations and well done on that journey. Thanks, Trace. Well, I think you understand, you know, the way that you get into uh, the industry sometimes is through the back door because, you know, the front door is well and truly welded mm. shut. And we came in, you know, through the party band slot where it was 12 to 3 o'clock in the morning. And so you get a reputation pretty fast as a, you know, a rock and country album, you know, act and... Uh, you know, which kind of flies in the face why you got into country music in the first place, and that was for the, the, the lyric based and the stories behind the country songs. And so, you know, a few years back, I made the conscious decision just to focus on the, the lyrics and the characters within the stories, and uh, it's starting to pay dividends. And, you know, what excites me greatly is knowing that um, even though this album's coming close to its, uh, its end, I've got this new album ready to go, which is you want stories and you want, uh, you know, heartbreak, etc. It's all in there, so I can't wait for people to actually get a hold of this new one which um, I'm about to start in the studios fairly soon and when you just mentioned there like you know you, the earlier stuff you know some of the more up tempo and the more rocky ones have you decided even thought of like sitting at when you do because I know you do a lot of songwriters in the rounds and things like that pulling one of those country rock ones and doing it acoustic and dragging it back dragging that tempo back and ripping it right back to the raw stage and singing it raw have you done that with some of the earlier stuff Oh, yeah, yeah. You're forever kind of hearing new ways of producing your tracks. And uh, they're, for, they're living little beings. They're like little children, you know. They're forever growing and evolving in your own mind. And it's it's kind of funny, you know. Sometimes I can't even listen to my first album because of the way it was produced, because the way that the songs have evolved now with a bit of hindsight, you, you play it completely different. But that's just life, you know. You just uh, roll with it. And, uh, look, it's... Hopefully I can get to that stage where I can put down the songs that actually didn't even quite make the album. You know, like there's so many, you know, the songs I really connect with now that just never made the cut. Of course, you're going to be at uh, Songwriters Cafe as part of Urban this um, uh, this Saturday, year. Yep. And I'm looking and I'm looking at the program guide now, and it says Luke O'Shea and special guests. Seeing that's only just the three of us here. Who, who are the special guests? That's a good question. Well, we're playing at uh, Kedron with uh, with all, Kedron with all Services Club. That's the, on the Friday night with uh, the beautiful Lynn Botel and Michael Bryes. And that's going to be an absolutely corker of an evening down there. But uh, uh, on the Saturday, I know I'm joining forces with two other great songwriters. I'm just not sure they are. But then I uh, back up uh, by myself at the Village Hotel at uh, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. So... With the 1 o'clock to the 2.15 spot in the Sunrise Cup, I'm not sure who I'm with, but I'm, you know, knowing who books those shows, like Denise Tornbeck, you know, it, it's always going to be quality. <laughs> uh, look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a load of fun. Now, The um, you're talking about going into the studio with a new album. Will we be previewing some of the new tracks there at Songwriters on the Saturday? Uh, you, uh, you'll get it straight hot off the desk, <laughs> you know, and you guys are first cut. So, uh, look, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's at the pre-pro stage now. It's like building a house. You, you just got to find all your favourite tradesmen and find out when they're able to kind of come along and add their little, their bricks and their flavour to it. And um, so it's at an exciting stage at the moment, but uh, the songs are well and truly there and they've been bounced off uh, the audiences and, uh, you know, given the thumbs up and down. So I've really enjoyed this process and, uh, but, you yeah, know, it's, it's always an ongoing journey and that's passion, mate. We're willing to suffer for uh, our art. Well, we're going to uh, we're going to go out with a song that I believe um, really joins the whole bush poetry of uh, Henry Lawson, the great songwriters, and uh, and that little bit of thing about when you're away from home, uh, whatever it is. In the old days, it was the drover. Uh, some days it's the uh, salesperson. Some days it's the the fly in, fly outs, isn't it? Well, but, um, what about the miners today that's too? What I mean, the just, fly yeah, in, fly outs. Out. Yeah, it's uh, it, whatever it is. It takes you away and leaves the uh, the wife at home to raise the kids and do whatever else to happen so it doesn't matter that it's the drover's wife of 150 years ago or, or whatever it is it's still relatable today absolutely yeah big d you hit the nail on the head mate that's the actual sentiment behind the song you know i remember it being read it as a boy by henry lawson just being angry because i didn't understand why the dad wasn't there because at that stage you still think money grows on trees but, uh, mate, I've spent about three weeks on the road in Queensland just recently, and, uh, you know, apart from being away from my own family, I 
you know, we played in a lot of communities where you have a lot of miners. And a lot of people work on the roads, even those road gangs, you know, they go out for weeks on end, you know, on those camps out there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so, you know, with all those blokes going out there and, and doing it tough, you know, opening the family, providing as best they can, uh, there's a there's a very, very special person doing the toughest gig of all, and that's raising the family on their own. So this story is for the woman you know, who uh, usually gets left behind, but also for the man who uh, I now understand is uh, doing his best. That's right. And, of course, um, Luke O'Shea, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Saturday, 4th of May, the 10th Urban Country Music Festival. Get down to the Village Precinct, 1pm at the McCormick Songwriters Cafe for Luke O'Shea with guest appearances and then heading over at 3 o'clock on to the Village Hotel for Luke O'Shea. Luke, thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to my 2013 hug. Ah, uh, mate, bring it on. And I'll, I'll do my best not to make you cry this year. Yeah, no, don't do that this year. You uh, will. I know you will. <laughs> um, and quickly, if uh, if someone silly enough doesn't have a copy of Grover's Wife, they'll be able to pick it up this weekend? Absolutely, mate. You've only got a few thousand left, so I'll be quick.